The new Final Cut Pro 10 is here. I repeat, the new Final Cut Pro 10 is here. This is not a drill. The new Final Cut Pro 10 is here. I'm Renee Ritchie. Welcome back to Vector. Apple has just released Final Cut Pro 10.4.4. So let's take a look. Headline features include workflow extensions. Now, I'm not completely sure this uses the exact same architecture as extensibility, which in my opinion remains one of the biggest advances in personal computing in years, given its astounding balance of functionality and security. But the implementation fits that model. You can now bring third-party apps right into Final Cut, which makes for a more coherent, much more convenient experience. It's not wide open yet, like share, action, and photo filter extensions, were at launch. Apple is working directly with partners right now to ensure a really seamless fit and not, oh God, oh God, this hideous requester won't get off my timeline. How do I kill it? How do I kill it just to watch it die? You know, stuff like that. Shutterstock is there and it lets you preview and purchase assets right from Final Cut. Frame.io lets you collaborate in a way that makes me wish I was an editing team of several and not just of one right now. CatDV brings the powerful asset management system right into the Final Cut interface. You can download the extensions for free from the Mac App Store, though you'll need to have or create an account with many of the services behind them. Several of them, like the ones I mentioned, are there starting today, with more coming all the time. And while I've only had a very limited time to play around with them, if workflow extensions are anything like previous extensibility features, they're going to be a real game changer in terms of having what you need just exactly where you want it and when. There's a new comparison viewer that pops up an independent window over the rest of the Final Cut interface, so you have reference images immediately accessible and available for color grading anything and everything else in your timeline. That means no more scrolling desperately around or deliberately missequencing something so you can scrub. You can quickly jump back and forth now and save reference images from the timeline, other projects, and even the web. I'm still a complete noob when it comes to color grading, but even my pain points are addressed by this. There's a new floating customizable timecode window that you can drag around, resize, and use to track project and source timecode. A new tiny planet mapping so you can create cute spheres out of your 360 degree video in non-360 projects and animate to change the field of view and zoom around. There's a new batch share so you can export multiple clips or projects in a single step. You can add a LUT and combine with bundles for multi-file, multi-format mega sharing. I don't really use any of those features yet, but it looks super productive, informative, and cool, respectively. What I do and will be using the stuffing out of is the new video noise reduction feature. It lets you drag in the effect to reduce grain and artifacts, quickly adjust the amount and look, and otherwise save footage you may otherwise have to junk. Again, I've only had a very limited amount of time to play with it, so I'm not sure if it'll be a lifesaver or just another tool in the belt, but honestly, the more tools in the belt, the better. There's a new version of Motion as well. That includes a bunch of stuff I'll run down in a scalding minute, but this is the comic filter, and much like the effect in Clips and FaceTime, it lets you turn any photo or video into something straight out of a graphic novel. But in Motion, you have controls, so Steve Ditko, Frank Miller, or Fiona Staples, that's all up to you. And other than the cool comic book effect, it's bringing full-on Final Cut Pro-style color grading to your graphics. That includes color wheels, color curves, hue and saturation curves, and custom LUTs, plus Tiny Planet, <laughs> just like Final Cut. Compressor is also hitting 4.4.2 and going 64-bit. Yeah, you can give it a finally. Go on, get it out. You know you want to. So now you can take advantage of all the memory your modern Mac has available for even better performance, and it maintains support for 32-bit as well, so all your files, old and new, just keep on working. SRT format has been added to closed captioning, and Compressor will now auto-configure MFX and QuickTime settings based on source media properties. Hurrah. For those keeping track at home or in the studio, this is the 28th free update to Final Cut Pro 10, which I'm guessing is another one of the ways Apple shows the value of the Mac far exceeds the initial cost of the hardware. If you don't already own Final Cut Pro 10 or Compressor or Motion, you can get them for $299, $49, and $49 respectively in the Mac App Store, and the updates are available today. Also available right now, and just as cool as Final Cut Pro 10, is Audible. Final Cut is so visual, it's nice to be able to engage your audio senses, rest your eyes, and just listen to fantastic stories whenever and wherever you want with Audible. And right now, for a limited time, you can get three months for just $6.95 a month. That's more than half off the regular price. Give yourself the gift of listening, and while you're at it, think about giving the gift of Audible to someone else on your list, maybe many people else. For more, go to audible.com slash vector or text vector to 500 500. Thanks Audible and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. 
So that's Final Cut Pro 10, 10.4.4, which has several new features that make me really happy and more features that I'm sure will make far better editors than me far more happy. I don't want to open up the whole Final Cut versus Premiere land war argument again, but I do want to know what you think. So hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the comments below. Thank you so much for watching.